Video two of week nine covering R. We are going to go over chapter one of that guy that I mentioned um, in this video. So I would recommend following along on the guide as we go through the video. Um, this way you can actually practice it and do it, um, get more experience with it and also get more comfortable with it because you will have to do this on the exam. Um, okay, so first off, I wanna go over how to open R and R Studio. So um, on a Windows machine, you would just go to your applications and you can select R from there. On Linux, you would execute R in the terminal or um, for my purposes on a Mac, you're going to either, it's already in your dock like it is for me, or if not, you can go to Finder, uh, which is that little uh, magnifying glass. Um, and if you type R into that, it, you can um, select it from the Finder window. So either way, when you first open R, you can click on it and it will take a second, um, but you should get that. Um, unfortunately, I have to wait for the pinwheel of death to go away. Um, but this is what it should look like. So it's just this little console window that opens up. Um, it gives you a little bit of information to start with. So it shows you the version you're using, um, tells you a little bit about R, um, and tells you about your workspace. So, right, this is the R console window. And this is where you would type in your code. Um, but in the console window, you can only type one line of code at a time. And so we're gonna go over some of that, but um, uh, we're gonna cover scripts um, a little later in the video. And those are gonna be the main thing we're gonna be using. They will be what you use for the exam. Um, but we're going to start with this. So this is R, and I wanted to show you the difference between opening R and opening R Studio. So I already have an R Studio window open um, for other work I'm doing. So if I click on this and go to new R Studio window, it will take a second. Sorry, it also is probably loading um, an old workspace, which is why it's going to take a little longer. Um, so I'm just gonna wait for that. Um, but I wanted to show you that using R Studio and using R are very similar, um, and it's not going to make a difference what one you use. Okay, so um, it loaded up the most recent stuff that I had. So you can just ignore my code, ignore my help page and all that. I'm gonna close these out. Um, these are scripts actually. And we will get to that in a little. Um, I'm gonna actually clear my environment. You can ignore this because you will not have to do this. Um, you shouldn't have anything done there. Uh, okay, so we can go to plots because there's nothing in there. All right, so right, I wanted to show the difference between R Studio and R. So if we go to our R window, you can see that it's just the console. And if we look at our studio, this page, this um, this little tiled window right here, this is actually the same console. So anything I type in here is going to do the exact same thing as typing it into here. So there's no difference between really the R console here and R Studio's console, which then runs it in R. Um, so you can use whichever one you want. Like I said, I'm used to using R Studio, And one of the reasons that, like the difference I wanna point out and why I prefer to use R Studio is because in R Studio I have this tiled console right here. But if I plot anything, like I make like a, a scatter plot or um, a pie chart or something like that, my plot is gonna show up right next to it so I can actually view it at the same time as viewing my console. If I have a script open, it would have another window here. Um, and so I can view my scripts and my console at the same time and any data I have loaded in will pop up in my environment. And so I can just see everything all at once, which I prefer, um, but it really just kind of depends on your own comfort and what, you, what your own preferences are. So I am gonna show you how to open a script in R and in R Studio, but for the moment I am going to do uh, most of the videos in R Studio, But remember, it is the same as typing in the console in R. Um, 
and doing a script in RStudio is the same as doing a script in R. Okay, so feel free to follow along in either R or RStudio, whichever you would like. Okay, so this console window is used to run, like I said, single lines of script. Uh, single, sorry, <laughs> single li lines of code. Um, okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is print um, some text. So let's say you wanna say something in R. Um, maybe you want to proclaim to the world as the, um, the guide goes through, hello world. So if you wanna print something, you're going to simply type print. Um, you can also see that in R Studio, it comes up with different options. Um, so if you're typing, if you see that I've only typed um, PRI, you can actually see that it starts to fill it in, which is one thing that I find kind of nice, I guess, just because I'm lazy. Um, but I can select print and then just press enter rather than typing the entire thing out if that's what I wanna do. Or if you're um, doing it in the console in R, um, you can actually type out print and parentheses. So parentheses are really um, important in R and in coding. So basically whatever you're typing is encapsulated in this larger print function. And so that's why those, those parentheses are really, really necessary to make your code actually run. So um, we have print and then we're gonna wanna do quotations. And what quotes represent in R is that you're writing a character or a string. So you're writing text as opposed to writing something that's numeric um, or writing a function or some other things that we'll get into. So if you want to actually write text, you need to encapsulate it with quotations. So then we can write, hello world. And when we press enter, you can see that it prints it because we uh, execute that print command. So it shows hello world, like exactly how we printed it. And it actually shows the quotations, which also lets you know that what you just printed was actual text. Okay. So the next thing is that once you actually have things typed into your console, um, R remembers that. So you can use your up and down buttons to access code that you've previously written without having to type it out a, like again each time you want to do it. So if I wanted to change what I wrote just a little, but I don't wanna to have to type out the entire print function again, I can actually just press up and it will go to the most recent um, command that I typed in. So let's say I want to change this a little and change world to universe. I can do that um, by typing up and then using my arrow keys to access world, delete it and read and type my new word. Then if I press enter, you can see it prints it again. Um, and then you can also see that using those arrow keys again, if I press up, it goes to the most recent one. If I press up again, it will go to the one before that. And it will keep doing that for as much um, uh, as many lines of code as you have in that specific session. So I don't need to access the rest of that right now. Um, okay, so right, I did want to cover installing packages. We're not gonna be using them, but since, since it is such a large part of R, um, when you actually get used to using it, um, I did think it's important to kind of go over. And the guide also covers installing and accessing packages as well. So I am gonna just quickly show you how to do so, even though we're not gonna do it for the test and we're not gonna really be using packages for our purposes. Okay, so um, especially for you all, when you first download um, R and or RStudio, you don't have any packages installed. And so, um, Packages, there's like tons of different packages that are made for R um, to allow you to do different things without having to code absolutely everything you're doing yourself. Um, they're incredibly useful. Everyone uses packages. Um, and so it's important to know how to actually install them um, and how to access them. So if I want to install a new package, um, I can do, just type out the command install dot 
packages and you can see that it's right there. Um, so I'm just gonna click on it and it's gonna autofill the rest of it for me, including our quotations. Um, sorry, not our quotations, our parentheses. So now that I have that, I'm going to want to type the name of the package that I want to install. So you do have to know what the package is that you're installing before you install it, because um, you have to type the name out. Um, and you're going to type it in quotations. So it's going to be actual text. Um, I'm going to show you how to install Swirl, which is a really helpful um, tutorial package that actually walks you through R and helps you learn it. Um, and so I recommend if R is something that you want to use more um, and you want to familiarize yourself with it um, more and also just get more practice with using it, Swirl is a really helpful package to do so. So we're just gonna type out Swirl. And then once we have our entire thing, install.packages, um, parentheses, quotations, Swirl, we can press enter and it's going to install our package. Great. Um, it will also automatically install dependencies if you need to do so. Um, and dependencies are just other packages that need to be installed in order for this package to run. Um, okay, so now that we have our, uh, now that we have Swirl installed, um, we only really need to do this once. So now um, our local version of R has Swirl installed. However, if we want to access it every time we open a new session, and so by session, what I mean is that um, this current R Studio window that I have open is a session. If I were to close it out, um, save my files and close it, the next time I opened R Studio, I would be in a new session. And so something you have to do every time you are in a, your um, starting up a new session of R or R Studio, um, you have to uh, library your, uh, your packages that you want to be using for that current session. So if I wanted to actually use Swirl for this session, I would type library and Swirl. And you can actually see that it has Swirl installed so it knows to use that one. So if I press library Swirl, I can then just press. And uh, also once you have the package installed, you don't need to type the quotations around it anymore. So if I do library Swirl and press enter, it will come up with a little thing. So um, Swirl is, uh, like I said, a tutorial. So that's why it comes up with this stuff like, hi, type Swirl when you are ready to begin. Um, I'm not going to do that, but uh, it is a tutorial where you, you type out different things that it tells you to type, um, and it will actually give you feedback as you go through it. So it is really helpful um, and slightly actually interactive. Um, so again, a very good tool. Um, we're not going to be using it, but I would recommend it for any people who are, uh, anyone who's just starting to learn R and how to do things in it. Okay. So the next thing I wanted to cover is R as a calculator. So, um, R can be used as a calculator. I do so sometimes. Um, and the way you do it is just by typing in the way you would type in to any calculator, the thing that you want to execute. So um, I'm gonna cover example 1.3.1 using some simple arithmetic. Um, if I want to add up the numbers one through five, what I could do is just type in one plus two plus three plus four plus five, um, exactly as you would in my calculator. Um, and then you just press enter. It will then give you the answer you can see here and you can see that it's 15. So R is great for if you need a calculator to do some simple arithmetic, um, you can do so using R um, and just by typing it into the console. Uh, you can also do much more complicated arithmetic. So it's not just um, exclusive to kind of simple calculator commands. You can actually do a decent amount more on it. So going over example 1.3.2, um, we're going to type out that example and go through it. So um, one thing that you're gonna get used to when, or that you would get used to when coding is actually typing out some of your 
like the structure of your code before you actually fill it in. And so if I know I want, I have a complicated fraction that I want to do, I might type out parentheses, my divided sign, and other parentheses um, before I actually fill it in. So if I want to fill in the denominator first, because it's a little simpler, I can do so. Within my parentheses, I'm going to type 3.8 minus 2.9 plus 1.6. And again, this is example 1.3.2, so that's where these numbers are coming from. Um, okay, I'm not gonna cover order of operations, but I will say that if you are not familiar with order of operations, I would really recommend doing so because you're gonna have a very hard time um, actually doing these things in R if you don't know the proper order of operations, you won't get the answer, right? Um, so again, if you don't know it, please do familiarize yourself with it. It's very basic. So please familiarize yourself with proper order of operations if you're not familiar with it already. Okay, so that's our denominator. We then have a numerator of 2.4 times, again, um, the result of a different expression. So we're going to type another set of parentheses. And that is 3 plus 1.2. Okay, so again, the way that you kind of read this is that everything in the parentheses is going to be done first. So 3 plus 1.2, the result of that, so 4.2, is going to be multiplied by 2.4. That's what the uh, multiplication in R is, is done with a little asterisk. So you have 2.4 times the result of 3 plus 1.2, all of that divided by uh, the result of 3.8 minus 2.9 plus 1.6. And so once we press enter, we will get the result 4.032. Um, so you can see that there's a lot of different things you can do in R um, just for the basic uh, arithmetic. Multiplication again is an asterisk. Division, you do that with a slash. Um, uh, addition is done using a plus sign, and subtraction is, un is done doing a minus sign. So just keep that in mind. And again, uh, really helpful to get familiar with using parentheses to be able to get your order of operations correct. OK, so now that you know how to do a little bit of just basic calculations, we are going to go over using a script file. Um, I'm going to open it in R first, and then I will show you how to do the same thing in R Studio. So going back to my R window, um, actually, let me minimize that just so it's a little less cluttered. Okay, so back to the R window. Um, just remember, you can do all the same things here. So it's still a console window. You can do one plus two plus three plus four plus five. It's going to do the exact same thing as that console window did in our studio. So whatever one you're comfortable using is perfectly fine. Now, if we want to open a script, um, what we're going to do is go to file and uh, new document. That's how you do this in R. So once you click new document, you're going to get a script file that pops up. And so what a script file is, is essentially um, writing out multiple lines of code that gets saved to its own file. This way you don't have to type everything individually over and over again. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so scripts are incredibly useful. If you are going to be using R, um, huh, uh, you are going to have to be comfortable with using scripts. Um, nobody just types out every single thing new in the console every time. Like everyone uses scripts and actually has their uh, text saved in some kind of fashion. So this is also going to be the type of file that you turn in for your exam. So it is very important to get used to using scripts, um, opening them and saving them. So uh, in uh, R, you can use this script file um, where you would type stuff in, just kind of like any text file. Um, 
So let's see. If we want to type something, um, let's go through, I'll just show you how to type example 1.4.1. So to start, we can just start typing. So there's nothing else fancy happening here. You just start typing. So two to the third power plus three to the fifth power. Okay, so that's the first line of example 1.4.1. Once I actually have something typed, um, and I'll, I'll go over exponents a in just a little, uh, you can save this file. So if we're gonna save a script file using just R, what we do is press, um, for Windows, it's control save. For Macs, it's gonna be command save. So I press command save, and you can see that a little save window comes up. So I can save this as example, 1.4.1 um, and then the file extension for an R script is dot capital R. So that is the extension that you're going to have to save um, your test as for when you take the exam in week 10. Um, and you can save it wherever to your documents. I'm going to save it to my desktop so that I can delete it later. I know it doesn't look like a delete much from my desktop, but I, I promise I do. Okay, so we can press save. And then you can see that your script is actually saved to a location. Um, I would also like to say that if you're doing this for the exam, please save your, your scripts to your desktop. I, in my experience for students, um, it is the place that they have the easiest time finding their files to upload them. Um, and I know that that's been a problem for a lot of different students throughout this quarter. So please try to save your scripts um, your R scripts to your desktop so you can very easily find them and upload them to Canvas when you need to. Okay, so again, uh, back to scripts. You have the script saved. And so now what you can do, um, if I wanna type another line of code, I'm gonna press enter. And then I can type the next line in that example 1.4.1. So three to the, in parentheses, one minus 0.5. Um, right, so basically the way the script, uh, script works is that you have multiple lines of code, whereas in the console, if I had typed this line of code and pressed enter, it would have executed that code and it wouldn't have been saved. So this way with a script, I can type out multiple lines, execute the lines that I want, uh, when I want to, um, and save all of my work as I go. So last thing in terms of um, just basic use of scripts, I would really recommend saving, like anytime you type out a new kind of piece of code, I would recommend saving it. And all you have to do is press Command S again, and it will save um, save a more updated version of your file. Um, and I recommend doing this because uh, it, at least when you get to using more complicated data structures, um, you might be doing something that could potentially cause R to crash. Um, I at least experience this a lot. Um, and I know if you're using like an older computer, you might also experience this. Or if you're using very large data, you might also experience this. And so a good practice is to just save your scripts uh, really frequently because you don't wanna lose your work. Okay, so that is how you do a script in R. I'm now gonna show you how to do the exact same thing in R Studio. So I'm actually gonna close this out um, and minimize my R console window and open up my R Studio window. So if I'm in R Studio and I wanna open a script exactly the same as I just did in R, I'm going to go up here to this little plus sign and a new sheet. Um, I can click on that and it gives me some options. So R script is the first one, that's one we're gonna choose, but there's a bunch of other options if you are you know, coding something uh, something else in R. Um, I'm not gonna go over these, but um, there's a lot of different things. Again, like I've said, you can do in R. Um, all right, so if I want a new R script, I can click on this first option um, and it will open it, like I said, in the R Studio window as just another tiled window, which I really like being able to have my script, have my console, have my environment and my plots all in one. Um, but that's just me personally. 
I also want to point out that these different windows can be adjusted. So maybe you don't want your script really big. You can actually minimize that if you want to look at your plot a little larger. Um, or maybe you don't care about your plots that much and you just want them kind of over here. You can make your script bigger. Um, that's up to you. And you can do that by going up and down with these borders as well. All you have to do is hover over the border till you get that um, uh, double arrowed uh, black cursor and then you can uh, hold it down and adjust it as you as you'd like. Okay, so since we're going to be focusing on scripts and not plots and environments, I'm going to adjust that like that. Um, and for your console, you can just scroll up and down for what you've previously done. Okay, so um, back to that same example of 1.4.1. We're going to type out that example and then cover how to run uh, pieces of scripts. Then we're just going to go over comment blocks and we'll be done for this chapter. All right, so example 1.4.1, um, the first line is 2 to the third plus 3 to the fifth. And so what these little caret symbols are, that um, upward pointing arrow, um, that is indicating an exponent. So this means two to the third exponent or two cubed. Um, and so that's how you're going to type that out if you're asked for an exponent. Um, all right, so that's the first line. Then you have three to the power of one minus 0 0.5. And our last line is nine to the power to squared times Four cubed. Okay, so now you can see that with scripts, you don't have to ex execute all of the lines you've typed at once. You can choose what to execute when you want to. So if I want to just do this first line of code, all I have to do is highlight it and press Control Enter. And you can see that in my console, it executes what I just did in my script. And you can see that the answer is 251. I can also do this with multiple lines of code at once. Um, oh, I also wanted to mention that for um, Windows, this is Control R instead of Command Enter. Um, and the guide goes over this. Um, so yeah, if you read over the guide, if you're not using a Mac, you can see it, uh, how to do all the same things for Windows. Um, I'll try to, to mention it, though, as I go through. All right, so now let's say I want to run all of these lines of code. I can then highlight all of them because I want to run all of them. And then I can do that control enter again. And you can see in the console, it runs it line by line. So it ran again, the two to the third plus three to the fifth. Um, and then it ran my next line of code and then my next line of code. And so again, the the benefit of having scripts is to actually be able to save your work as you go and to write out big chunks of code that you can then execute later on. Um, also just point out that if you want to run an entire script at once, you can go up to this run function um, and you can run uh, different, uh, you have different options for running your script. Okay, so that's example 1.4.1. You can type out multiple lines. Um, and now we want to cover comment blocks. So commenting is really important in your scripts. Um, this is something that most people, I think, kind of learn the hard way of, you know, typing out their code, going back to it like even a week later and finding that they don't understand anything they typed out. They don't know why they were typing it and they have to do a lot of work all over again. Um, I have had this happen to me, to me many, many times. <laughs> so I would really encourage it, encourage you to use comments to be able to organize your, your, uh, your scripts so that others can read them easily and so that you can read them easily um, as you work on a project. So commenting in R is super simple. Um, it's done with hashtags. So if you press enter, we can go up to this line here and just do hashtag and then um, 
you can type out whatever your comment is. So this is section one, I can, or line one, I can do that and then press enter, press enter again, do hashtag two, maybe I have a space in there, um, press enter, enter again, uh, and then oh, do it again for the last one. Okay. So, um, I did want to point out that some conventions are keeping a space between your comment and your actual code. Um, and then the next comment after that, um, not including the first and last lines of your script. Um, it just helps to keep it clean, but that's totally up to you. I mean, there's a whole lot of times where I don't have this space and it looks just a little more cluttered like that. Um, but I would recommend putting the space in if it's something you remember to do. Um, and so here you can see that we've commented out separate pieces. Um, you will be asked on your exam to um, comment out um, your separate questions so that we as TAs can more easily go through them and run the different chunks of your code um, and be able to grade a little easier. So yeah, this is how you comment things and you don't have to write only like small stuff. You can write out, um, so number two, using exponents. Um, you know, you can put, uh, you are encouraged to put a little more description of, um, of your text. So I also wanna point out that at the beginning of a script, oftentimes you put like a little header. So you might do a single hashtag and say that this is chapter one. Oh, sorry, chapter one. Um, using R. So you can put a heading. Um, you can also do multiple hashtags at once. So sometimes when I, I want my text to stand out, and this is not necessarily encouraged, um, I put little lines of hashtags just to separate them. There are much more professional ways to do this. But um, if you're just going through your script quickly, you can type out multiple hashtags and it's not gonna change anything. So I can type out the exact same thing again. Um, and using one or using multiple is going to do the exact same thing. And it's just going to comment out everything that is after the hashtag. Um, so you can also do this in next to your lines of code. So if I'm in this line of code, I have something actually typed out, I can actually put next to it a hashtag and then um, put that this is a comment. Um, and it'll do everything after the hashtag. So you do have to put your comments at the end of the lines of code that you want to, but there's different options for these. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so right, this is the end of chapter one. Um, I would really recommend going through the practice problems in the, uh, in the guide. And there's actually in the appendix, you can find the answers to the practice problems, which is also helpful. Um, because I, I don't personally like when you have practice problems in a textbook or something like that, and then you don't actually find out what the answers are. Anyway, um, so I would recommend going through those practice problems, going through um, the examples again, and just making sure you're comfortable with it. Um, all the stuff we cover in the chapters will be on the exam. So you definitely want to practice it as you go. Um, yeah, so next time we will cover chapter two. Remember that um, as you go through these and for your quiz, save your scripts before you close out your R session. Um, and yeah, I will see you all next time.